Hello, I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. Welcome to Tips and Techniques. In this edition, I'm going to show you how to use the Film Look plugin from the Film Effects bundle. Making video footage look like it was shot on film is seen by many as some kind of holy grail. In reality, it's a combination of things that help us achieve a film like appearance. Because there are so many distinctions between different film stocks and processing techniques, it's very hard to nail exactly what a film look is. But there are certain things that we can do to make our video look more like it was shot on film, perhaps to mimic a particular look from a movie or a TV series, perhaps to convey a particular mood, or maybe to develop a unique signature style for your production. Or it could, of course, simply be to give a lift to otherwise flat-looking footage. Whatever you personally hope to achieve, New Blue's Film Look plugin is a fantastic place to start. Film Look comes bundled in the Film Effects package, and we're going to be spending the next few minutes looking at the different controls and how they affect your footage. OK, let's dive straight in and see what we have to work with. I'll assume you already know how to install a new plugin and how to use it in your NLE, so I've already gone ahead and set up a clip with an instance of Film Look. You can see that we have a colour chooser and six dials, and that's it. All new blue effects are really simple to understand and use, and you won't find yourself being swamped with 50 parameters you have to learn to get a result. That doesn't reduce the impact the effect has on the footage though, as we'll see when we start building up some film looks from scratch. There's a whole bunch of presets as well, ranging from the sublime to the ridiculous. As with all presets, they're great jumping off points that you can further tweak to get exactly the look that you want. But for now, let's select the Reset to None preset to start with a clean slate. I'm going to start with a very short clip of a street scene. It's been shot using available light, and as you can see it's a little flat and lacks definition. I want the scene to pop out of the screen more, so let's see what we can do to lift it a little and give it some depth and appeal. Firstly, I want to emphasise the warmth of the scene. I'm going to apply a tint, which I can do either by using the eyedropper and selecting any colour from the screen, or as I'm doing here, by clicking on the colour swatch and selecting a colour there. For warmth, I'll use an orange tint. Notice that the tint hasn't had an effect on the clip yet. To do that, I have to use the tint dial. I don't want to overdo things, so I'm just going to dial in a value of 20 for now. We can tweak that later if necessary. Note that if I turn the dial to the left or use negative values, this subtracts the tint from the scene, which in this case would bring out the blues more and make the scene look cooler. Different film stocks and processing methods give very different colour results, and playing around with the tint controls is a great place to start if you're trying to mimic a particular look. Let's take a look at saturation now. It goes without saying that for an oversaturated look you'll want to turn the dial way up, and for a completely monochrome look you'll turn it all the way to the left. Leaving it at zero has no effect on the saturation of the clip. Now for this shot, I want to rein the colour saturation in quite a lot, as I think we're in danger of it becoming gaudy, so I'll drop it to minus 40. Let's skip the brightness and contrast dials for the moment, and go straight to the film gamma dial. This is a very important control when it comes to mimicking the look of film. Basically, it controls the way light and dark tones are presented, it compresses the highs to make them lighter, and the lows to make them darker. At the same time, it expands the mid-range tones, or the gammas, as many professional colour graders would call them. You can see here as I raise the dial that it has a very clear impact on the shot. For this clip, I want to use a value of 70 to start with. Let's split the preview screen to see the results more clearly. You can see that it really crushes those shadows, gets rid of a little of the unnecessary detail in the highlights, and gives a much greater sense of depth to the shot. It's looking good already, but let's turn to the diffusion control and see what that can do for us. Diffusion adds a nice soft glow to the more exposed parts of the shot. Now I don't want to add too much in this case, you can see what happens to the signs at the top centre of the frame when I do. Let's try a value of 10. Now I'm going to go back and adjust the brightness and contrast. I tend to leave these controls until last so I can fine tune the overall appearance of the effect. So let's set brightness to 15 and contrast to 20. OK, I think I've got the shot looking roughly how I want it. Let's split the preview again and see the difference from the original untreated shot. Much better. We've gone from a picture that was clearly shot on video to one that has character, definition and much greater appeal. OK, let's look at a more extreme example. 
I tend to be quite conservative in my use of any effects in regular footage, but for stylized sequences such as title segments or segues, I sometimes like to let my creative hair down. Here's a clip shot in a department store in the UK. Again, it's not particularly exciting to look at as it is, and there's a nasty green cast to the picture, no doubt caused by the fluorescent lights in the store. I want to give this footage a very clean, almost clinical feel, and I'm going to start by applying a slight pink tint set to 40 to reduce that green hue. Let's split the screen, and you can see immediately that this has worked quite nicely. Now I'm going to drop the saturation down to, say, minus 60. And then I want to add just a small dose of film gamma. Let's try 15. That'll just crush those blacks ever so slightly and lift the highlights a little. OK, let's look at diffusion now. I'm going to go a bit wild here and use a value of 50. You can see immediately what it's done. I really like the way it's blown out all the detail above the arc here and below the edge of the escalator. But it's also softened up the image more than I really want. So I'm going to counter that with a hefty dose of contrast. Let's try 45. That's great. I want to just back off the brightness a little, so I'm going to use a value of minus 5. And there you have it. Let's compare it with the original using the split screen. And now let's look at the finished clip. We've taken a piece of everyday footage and turned it into a lovely, high-tech, clean-looking image that reminds me a little bit of the space station scenes in 2001. OK, one more example just for luck. Using the Film Look plugin is a great way to convey a mood in your project. Think of how the overall look of, for example, Saving Private Ryan or The Matrix has a profound impact on the way you feel about what you're watching. It can lift you, it can make you tense, or it can make you really miserable. Let's use Film Look now to try and get a mood across to the viewer. Here's a short clip shot in Milan in Italy. It was shot on a fairly bland February morning with fairly bland natural light. And the result is a fairly bland, flat shot. I want to get a melancholy feeling across to the audience, so I'm going to start by applying a cold, miserable tint. I'm going to use this petrol blue colour, and I'm going to crank it right up to 100. I want to lose all the other colours in the clip, so let's drop saturation down to minus 100 for a completely monochrome effect. Now I want to get some depth in there, so I'm going to apply film gamma. Uh, let's try a level of 40. I'm still looking for some more contrast uh, to define the elderly gentleman more effectively against the background, so I'm going to use a fairly extreme setting of 50 for the contrast. It's going to raise the overall brightness a little with a value of 10. And finally, I want a kind of surreal, dreamy look, so I'll add a load of diffusion. Let's go with 50 again. And I think we're there. I really like the way the man stands out from the background. We've hidden some of the detail in the highs and lows that serve no purpose, and I think this really does convey a sense of loneliness and gloom. Oh, I hope that's cheered you up. Of course, in the real world, it's unlikely that we'd use just one filter for a finished effect. There are still a number of things I can do to improve the overall end result, so here, just for fun, is the same clip with a few other new blue effects applied just to round things off. I've used Rack Focus from Video Essentials 2, to introduce another level of interest and mystery. I've also applied film damage and film camera, both of which come bundled with film look, in the film effects pack. I've used these quite sparingly. And finally, to give it a more cinematic feel, I've applied the letterbox filter, also from Video Essentials 2. Oh, and there's one other twist, but that was done with some simple editing rather than using any effects. Before we see the final piece, I hope you found some useful tips to help you get started with the Film Look plugin. For more information about FilmLook or to view additional tips and techniques tutorials, visit our website at www.newbluefx.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.